Hey guys, this is Randy with Satter Station Farm, and now we're looking at doing mRNA plant vaccines. As in, the plant itself is genetically modified, and then you and will produce the vaccines for whatever virus may show up in the future. And you can eat that plant and then get all the vaccines you need. So some of the biggest things that set out, fucking set me off on this whole thing. The organic sort of agriculture grew out of opposition to indu the industrialization of agriculture. With the genetic engineering of plants, and eventually animals, we run into some ethical issues. A lack of animal welfare, confined animal feeding operations, inhumane practices, a loss of that relationship between the, the land, the animals, and people the industrialized agriculture really spawned, and then this rise of genetic engineering to try to manufacture our way out of problems. We have a man-made virus that was created in a lab, and now the response is to create plants that only exist in a lab. Uh, for the last 20, 30 years, there has been this slow creep of genetic engineering into our lives. It's like we're creating solutions to problems we don't need to have. The government in industry creates these problems and then creates solutions to save you from the problems. And that's 100% what it feels like. And especially with this whole vaccine, coronavirus issue, on one side you can have people who are 100% opposed to GMOs, but then also 100% support using vaccines because it saves lives, right? The safety of others. Well, what happens when now these researchers are gonna start having plants where you could have whole fields, whole cropland dedicated to growing food slash medicine, basically. And that kind of line between, is this a food product or is this a medical product? And you can see the big agricultural giants and the big pharmaceuticals just kind of merging into one. Monsanto and Bayer have already done such a thing. Then the chemical, they just, they're all one entity. They're, they're two sides of the same coin with the government flipping it and catching it, fucking rolling dice. So you've got people that have, have adopted organic agriculture and they've said, we do not want GMOs yet they will still say, yes, I want genetically derived vaccines. All right. Well, now we have plant-based genetically derived and developed vaccines, which seem to kind of f potentially float between both worlds, right? And so what if they've, obviously what's gonna happen is they're gonna develop these plants and spinach and lettuce, and they're gonna continue to push that envelope. Well, what if now they're starting to produce these vaccines or other medicines within plants in other plants than spinach and lettuce? What if they can make a corn crop or a soybean crop that now has your vaccines in it? Now, every product on the shelves that has a corn base to it, corn fucking chips, why not? Uh, could still potentially have your vaccines in it or your medicines. Now, in order to save lives, you need to eat these plant-based foods for the good of all, right? And that's kind of the argument, the, the crux of it all is the argument is it's you're saving lives, it's it's for your for everybody else, you know, you're doing your part. There's this whole uh, collectivism attitude that uh, if you don't fall in, all of a sudden you're you're um, an outlier or public enemy number one, or you're, you're on the other side because you have a different viewpoint. In the meantime, these gigantic corporations continue to get larger. The government continues to get more corrupt, and those at the low end get shut out. And there's this bit of mission creep into the organic certification in this whole watering down of what organic even means. And we've seen this already. Within the organic community, there's a splintering off of viewpoints, right? We've gone, even just our labelings have gone from when organic certified had mean to it and represent a set of ideas. Now you've got people that have spawned off, you know, now we're non-GMO or we're pasture-based, or we're regenerative, or we're certified naturally grown, or we're the real organic project now. Next up will probably be the real, real organic project, or whatever the fuck. You know, there'll be something, um, this internal splintering of what we're trying to get across. And I just see this technology growing, for better or worse, and continuing that degradation. And unfortunately, while there's all this internal splintering and everyone wanting to try to designate and be in their own little camp, those at the top are still in control and just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. I very much feel like the analogy 
of the red ants and the black ants in the jar and they're perfectly peaceful and doing their own thing and they just want to be left alone and they're just going about their day until somebody shakes the jar and they start fighting with each other but nobody ever stops to think of who's shaking the jar right it, it just it just i don't know how people can't see that and a lot of the organic certifications were originally revolving around soil and animal welfare concepts. I'd say more so to do with soil than of course animal welfare we got brought in. And now it's gotten, there's a whole standard and criteria that you have to meet uh, in order to you know, check the box. Monsanto, one of the most notorious shitbag seed companies out there for the destruction of the small farmer, patenting seeds. As we left hunting, gathering, and nomadic shepherding, and began our agrarian existence in the domestication of plants that that saving seeds and for the next generation to proliferate your existence into the future is just as fundamental nearly as uh, the ability to use fire to hunt and to fish and this idea that monsanto can come through and patent seeds and now you're infringement like if you go and plant those seeds that you saved somehow you're in violation of the law and they own those seeds it's, just, it's this insane legal framework behind that well of course then they've partnered up with bear monsanto and bear has announced that it will start marketing organic seeds in 2022 they're not going to sell organic seeds because they believe in the idea that fully functioning systems are diverse and have ebbs and flows of all organisms humans, plants, fungi, bacteria, the whole gamut. They're doing it because they can make money on it. If they believed in it, they wouldn't have been developing all their Terminator seeds and their gene drive extinction technology, where basically the genes die after a certain amount of time so you can no longer use those seeds, which is a great model because then you have to go back to the seed supplier. You can't just buy a product and have it. They've turned, it's a seeds as a service model. A SaaS model, the SaaS model and technology, software as a service. So now you can't just go buy QuickBooks, you can't go buy friggin' Adobe Premiere, you can't go buy software and just own it. You have to have a subscription and continually paying rent to these companies. Well, that's what the seed company has done. They said, oh, you can't just own these seeds because if you save your seeds and plant them every year, you're not beholden to us. So what we're gonna do is develop gene editing technology so now you can use them one season, you have to come back. Like they're forcing you to become a repeat customer and you stay within their cog and within their system. And that's bullshit. I fucking hate it. That technology companies, all of them. This idea that you can just convert your customers into an endless loop of cash cows. You know, they're just like this, it's ridiculous. 100%. I fucking hate it. So anyway, this whole technology now, it's not going to stop. And so one of the problems we've kind of run into is over the last couple of years, there's been this massive polarization. We have a massive contingency of people that had have head over heels, gladly and vehemently promoted genetic engineering of vaccines. mRNA vaccine, they're just like wholeheartedly taking it. And to a point where many people will even take a position, if you're not taking it, you're somehow a threat to society. And so what has that done for societal acceptance? Well, four or five years ago, organic agriculture was on the rise. People were massively wanting to know where their food came from. They, they were rejecting big agricultural industry because they're shitty fucking actors. So now, two years after a society saying, hey, we need these things, it's much easier for these industry giants just push in new technologies whether we want them or not. We've seen this creeping in with lab cultured meats. You're not even gonna have to have a garden anymore. You don't even have to raise animals. You can stay isolated in your home, plugged into your phone. You, all your food and all your medicine will be grown in a factory along with your meats. All you have to do is take a pill every day. That's your nutrition. And you'll meet whatever fucking guides the government gives you. The dystopian novels were not meant to be guidebooks. They were not aspirational things, they were warnings. And you can just see this slow march of people wanting to give up their freedoms to be subjugated and to be beholden to powers at the top. The US was one of the first countries to ever be founded on the idea that it's a bottom-up government. The ideas behind breaking up the power structure at the top was so that we were no longer in a hierarchical top-down management system, whether that's a tyranny, a monarchy, a dictatorship. All those structures are dictated upon a top-down management system. In the US, when it was founded, the ideas behind it were a bottom-up 
collective. Like the people hold the power, not those at the top. And as we've seen over the last freaking hundred years, and especially it just, it's accelerating, is this accumulation of power at the top in this corporatization of our country and this monopoly on basic human resources. So I guess that's what bothers me. I don't know if there's any scientific proof that GMOs are specifically going to cause you a health problem. However, uh, the motives at play and the larger game at stake, our civility and our future, I think those things, our freedoms, those are what's at stake, our children's futures. It's real trendy for people to attach to an identity. They're not merit-based. And you see a lot of tribalism at scale on things that are bullshit. Folks get into their camps and, and, and double down. The trend is towards divisiveness. And there's no grace for your neighbor to have a different opinion. And it's gonna be our downfall because in a bottom-up management, in a bottom-up system, if the, everyone at the bottom can't get along, those on top will just sit back and watch it happen and allow it to collapse because they don't give a fuck. Their primary job is to stay in power, not to help those at the bottom. And so the longer this infighting goes on, the more we're all gonna get fucked. Like it or not, this is a great topic. Genetically manipulating plants so that they can produce a vaccine. I mean, how timely, right? It really straddles that issue between how much genetic technology do we want in our lives and how much control do we want to give to the government to be telling us what to do and how important is it and so what future what do we want our future to look like and what are we going to agree to and what are we going to agree with and what are we going to allow is grace to our neighbors you know i'm gonna to have to you're gonna to to put up with a little bit of my bullshit and i'm gonna to have to put up with a little bit of yours but if we're going towards the same common goal if we're heading the same direction it's okay if we take different paths to get there right and that's why I'm bringing it up. And I really just found out yesterday, so it's really just my initial thoughts. What a wild time. Hmm? Let me know what you think. I better stop there. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.